you all must have used image editors on your laptops and mobiles. And there is a very high chance that you have rotated these images as well, right? But have you ever wondered what happens behind the scenes? There is a problem called rotate image on lead code that actually explores the concept behind it. If you want a quick solution and just want to see the code, refer to the link in the description below to my GitHub profile. However, if you want to see some animations and visuals about how this is actually happening, stick with me a little longer. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, a place where we explore technology and make programming fun and easy to learn. First, I will explain you the problem statement and show you a sample test case. Next, we will try to solve this problem using a brute force method and see why this is not desirable. Going forward, we will do a dry run of the code so that you can see how this is actually working. At the very end, I want to just talk about the application of this problem in your image editors. I'm pretty sure you will be amazed. Without further ado, let's get started. The best way to understand any problem is to understand the given sample test case. Now, this problem talks about rotating an image. But over here, you see that you are given a 2D array or a matrix. So how does this relate to an image? What you can do is, you can think of this matrix as an image, right? And over here, you see the final rotated image. According to the question, you need to rotate this initial image 90 degree in a clockwise direction. To help you visualize this problem, let me actually rotate this matrix for you. So you see, I have this image with me, right? Now, what happens if I rotate it? Let me just take this image and I will rotate it 90 degree in a clockwise direction. So, as you can see, this image has been rotated. And if you try, you can even map out all the elements. This is your 5 in the rotated image and this is your 5 in the actual answer, right? Here is your 1, here is your 1, here is 9 and here is 9. Similarly, for all the elements, you can find a 7 over here and you can find a 7 over here. You can find a 15 at the top left and you can find a 15 in the top left in your answer. Now, if you have understood the problem statement, feel free to try it out on your own. Then you can come back again to see what else do I have to offer. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. As always, we will first try to come up with a brute force solution. And if you have understood the problem statement correctly, you know that it is pretty straightforward. You have some elements in this matrix and these will get rotated. So somehow you can calculate what would be the final positions of these elements, right? For example, when this row would get rotated, currently this row looks like this and it has to look like ultimately this, right? So you can know that the element at the first would appear over here, then this over here, then this over here, right? So you know that this 5 would come over this place after rotation, right? So for a brute force approach, what you can do is you can simply create a new matrix of the same size. This is a blank matrix, right? Now you can copy 5 at the correct position, right? Next, what you can do is you can take this one and copy it at its new position. So I will take this one and I will enter it over here. Then I can enter 9 and then I can enter 11. So you can see I am rotating the matrix. Similarly, you can do it for all the other elements also. So in the second last row, I would have 2, 4, 8 and 10. And ultimately, you can fill up this entire matrix. You can see that this is your final rotated matrix. And in fact, this is the correct answer. But do you see the problem with this approach? You had to create a new matrix and you were storing all your results in this new matrix. Think about a case when your image is very large. Suppose you have a 10 MB image, then to rotate it, you need additional 10 MB of space on your drive, right? Similarly, in programming, if you have a matrix that is having 10,000 elements, then you need an additional space to store 10,000 elements. So this method of rotation is not feasible as this is not space efficient. 
we need to find a very space efficient method how can you go about doing that go to come up with an efficient solution to the problem think about it for a minute you have a matrix right and the only changes that you are making are that you are swapping the position of elements in this matrix right suppose the top left element can go somewhere else the top right element can go somewhere else and similar changes throughout the procedure right so in a way what we are doing is we are swapping these values right so when it comes to swapping you can have a couple of options available first of all you have a two way swap or a place where you are just swapping two numbers so suppose you have the number 4 and 8 and you have to swap these values right so 4 would go in place of 8 and 8 would go in place of 4 right similarly you can also have a three way swapping so in a three way swapping you have three numbers so this element would go over here the second element goes at the third place and the third element goes at the first place right based on this idea you can also have a four way swap that means all the four values are interchanging so the first value goes at the second place the second value goes at the third place the third value goes at the fourth place and ultimately the fourth value goes at the first place the important thing to note over here is that when you are performing these swaps you are not taking any extra space you just need to store some value in a temporary variable and you can use it to swap all of these values we will try to use this logic and solve our problem let us see how we can do that okay now that you know how a four way swap works let us take back our original input and output this is your input sample image and this is your final rotated image correct let us try to have a look at the position of the elements after rotation so you have the element number 5 and after rotation it reaches this new position you have element number 11 it rotates and it reaches this new position you have the element number 16 and it reaches a bottom left position you have the element 15 which reaches the top left position correct if you now try to look closely what is actually happening you are doing a four way swap right so this 5 comes over here this 11 reaches this new position 16 reaches the bottom left position and 15 reaches the top left position right based on this now let us try to build a general idea about how we can go about solving this problem let us forget that there are any numbers so what you can do is first of all you can start off with the outermost layer and what we are going to do is we will simply start applying four way swaps only to the first row so i take up my first element and i would be swapping all of these values upon swapping their position would change right once you have swapped out the first value you can move on to your next value and then once again you will perform a four way swap on these values so far so good similarly you can move on to your third value in the row i found out my third value and once again i would be performing a four way swap on these values similarly for one last time so you can see that we have rotated all the elements in the outermost ring of this 2d array and this can complete your one iteration similarly what you can do is you can move into the inner ring you can now start to visualize the second ring also so your second ring would be this one and once again you can start to pick up values to swap them out so i pick up these four corner values and i would be performing a four way swap on them you can then move on to the next set of values in your ring and these would be the second values right once again go ahead and perform a four way swap on them so based on this idea you can now start to think how you can solve this problem right first of all you can rotate all the elements of your outer ring then your inner ring and then ultimately all of your subsequent inner rings as well right so no matter 
how large your matrix is. You can use this approach to perform a four-way swap and you will not consume any extra space. Based on this idea, we can now easily write a code for it. Let us have a look at it. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I am once again taking the sample test case. Now, this matrix is passed in as an input parameter to the function rotate, right? Next, what we do is we just find out the row length of the matrix. This would be used to calculate the number of iterations of the for loop. Next, we start two for loops. The first for loop i would keep a count of the rings. When i is equal to 0, that means the outermost ring. When i is equal to 1, then we are referring to the inner ring. If our matrix was very large, then i equals to 2 would be the even smaller ring. Right? Next, you have the inner loop j. This loop keeps a track of each element in the ring you are choosing. So first of all, we would be dealing with 5, then 1, and then 9, and so on. Right? Once you enter these loops, you start your four-way swaps. I will quickly show you how does this swapping work. So I first of all have a temp variable. And I assign the bottom left value of this matrix to my temp variable. So the bottom left value is 15, right? So I assign 15 to my temp variable. Next, what I say is, I say that my bottom left value equals to bottom right. So bottom left is currently 15, right? I would point it to 16. So the value of my bottom left now becomes 16. In my next step, I would say bottom right is equal to top right. So bottom right is 16 and top right is 11, right? So I am assigning bottom right to top right. So far so good. Let us look at our next step now. I am saying that the top right value equals to the top left value. So this top right value should be equal to the top left value. So I would change this value 11 to the top left value equals to 5. Correct? And ultimately, I would use this temp variable to assign it to my top left value. That means this top left value would change and it would get equal to the temp value and that is 15. So now you can see how these iterations would be working and how your matrix would get rotated. In your next iteration, 1 would go over here, 10 would go over here, 12 would go over here, and 13 would get at the first place. And once this loop ends, then you would go into your inner ring and you would perform the rotations over there as well. And ultimately, you would get your rotated matrix. The time complexity of this solution is equal to the number of elements in the matrix because you are iterating over each of the elements at least once, right? Hence, the time complexity would be order of n squared. And the space complexity of this solution is order of 1. That is because you are not using any extra space. You are just using a temporary variable to swap out all your values. And you are not even using any new data structures. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want you to take a moment and think about what more applications can you come up with. Just think about the image as a grid and all these numbers represent small portions of the image. Now you can see when you are rotating this matrix, this is how each portion of your image will get rotated. And this is what happens behind the scenes. Right now, you just rotated the image, right? What if you want to flip the image? It's simple, right? You only need to swap left and right. And voila, your image would be flipped. What other permutations and what other image manipulations can you think of? What other image transformations do you know about? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. I am including a link in the description below in case you want to read more. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problem do you want me to solve next? Or rather, what do you want to learn next? Until then, see ya!